My next guest <laughs> was on the show before. He made us all laugh then, and I'm sure he'll make you laugh again tonight. Very talented guy, Jackie Mason. Jackie Mason. Thank you very much. It's a thrill to be introduced by Dean Martin because not many people have the nerve to go like this in public anymore. Now, <laughs> yeah, he happens to be a wonderful guy. I came here as a personal favor to him. I don't need this. Yeah. I'm telling you right now, I'm going to be a very big hit. I don't know if you're going to notice it. Well, sometimes you can be a sensation and not everybody appreciates it. Different people have their own point of view about the same thing. You can't please everybody. I don't care how great you are. This is true in every field. No matter how great you are, not everybody's gonna like you. Like, take a look at this guy. Here's a guy. To this girl, he's a sensation. I'm looking at the same guy. <laughs> don't take it personally, it's not your fault. Wait a second, in your case, I think it is. <laughs> it's just that different people have a different point of view about the same thing. Like, I never expected to be in show business. I never did, and I don't need this. You think I need this? I got enough money to last me the rest of my life. That's the truth. Unless I want to buy something. You, know. <laughs> you want me to be honest with you? I, no matter how much money you make in this country, there's a government here. I don't know if you heard about it. They keep in touch with me. I don't know why. Sometimes I think they depend on me for a living. I told them, don't bother me. I need you. I'll call you. I mean, it takes a lot of money to follow me around wherever I go to ask for money. How does it look? It's enough already. They have a lot of money. I say that publicly. Don't get nervous. It's not that I don't love my country. For my country, I would give my life. But my money. <laughs> Let's be honest about it. When I was starving, you think they sent me money? For years, I was starving. Starving. Didn't even send me a card. How do I feel? <laughs> Who knows? Maybe I need a couple of dollars. Couldn't care less. As soon as they found out I'm making money, they became a partner. <laughs> and it wouldn't hurt me if they asked me once. A country could be in trouble once. This is the third year in a row. I told them, I gave already. Yes, somebody else. <laughs> Already, you gotta learn to stand on your own two feet. I told him. I said, what are you gonna do when I'm gone? You're gonna close up the country? <laughs> All these are jokes, mister. <laughs> you see, let me explain it to you. Come here, sit with him. <laughs> you see, if a poor country asks you for money, you don't mind. How does it look? This is the richest country in the history of the world. They should come to me for help. How does it look? You know what the budget in this country was last year, mister? Look who I picked out to know the <laughs> The budget last year, I'll have to explain it to you. You don't look to me like too intelligent a crowd, I'll tell you. The budget last year was $187 billion. You know what I gave them? $12. Now, do you think without my $12, they couldn't get along? I told them, first spend $187 billion. Then if you're $12 short, I'll help you out. That's my best joke, mister. You see, if a country like Afghanistan asked me for money, I could see it. Their whole budget last year, $6. I give them 12, they got enough for two years. <laughs> but a country like this with Johnson at the head of it, you know how much money he's got? A fortune. And I make nothing, I have to help him. I told him you need more money than you got, go to work. <laughs> I know he's got to be a president, he can't work a whole day, but a part-time job. <laughs> you don't want to work, how about Lady Boy, Linda Boy, Lucy Bings Boy, Tree Boys without a job? <laughs> Let him get something, a pet shop, anything. <laughs> Let's be honest about it, they don't even have to walk to work, they could fly there. <laughs> I'm not saying this to pick on the president. Don't get the wrong impression here. Let's be honest, I don't mind losing it, Sullivan. I don't want to lose a country. <laughs> but let's be very honest about it. This whole thing is becoming preposterous. You don't come to me for this much money. First of all, I love my country. How many times do I have to tell you the same thing? Now, if they spent my money for things that I could use or I get something out of it, let's be honest about it. If I get something out of it, I'm glad to help out. But they spend my money to build things and to buy things I don't need and I can't use. Last year, they spent $11 billion to build roads. I don't need roads. <laughs> That's right, I haven't got a car. <laughs> I told them, buy me a car, I'll build your road. <laughs> the road they're building is not even in my neighborhood. Why should I pay for somebody else's road? Even if I had a car, I couldn't get to that road because from my house to that road, there's no road. <laughs> I better stop talking like this. From lines like this, you could be drafted yet. <laughs> I will never be drafted. I'm not worried about it. I have a new classification. A-G-H. After George Hamilton.
As a matter of fact, I don't want to say this about George Hamilton because I think he's a dedicated and a great American and he's a wonderful person too and he's a brilliant man too. I don't know if you heard about it. Since George... This is no time to go for work, man. <laughs> Since President Johnson... Did you read about it? President Johnson's rating has gone down in the public opinion polls and it's gone down very badly. I don't know if Johnson knows about it. But I guarantee you, George Hamilton does. As a matter of fact, I heard a rumor. Did you hear about it? He just called up Governor Romney's daughter for a date. <laughs> Don't you understand anything at all, Mr. <laughs> what language do you speak? I'd like to make contact with you. There I am, sweating, and this guy's looking at me like this. And I'm not even telling my best jokes. Because I don't want to tell my best jokes. Why should I tell my best jokes for these prices? Even if I could keep the money, the inflationary spiral I found out in this country is so fantastic. The value of the dollar right now has gone down so fast. The greatest problem we have in our domestic economy is the fact that the value of the dollar has gone down so fast that it doesn't pay to go to work. Did you know that? The longer you save a dollar, the more you lose. You hold it long enough, it's wiped out. <laughs> that happens to be the truth. The dollar of 20 years ago is only worth seven cents today. And the dollar of today will only be worth seven cents 20 years from now. If you put away $20,000 now, you know what you'll get back 20 years from now? Tops! A dollar and a quarter. <laughs> so I save money. You're wasting your time. You better give me your money, mister. <laughs> the whole thing don't make no sense because there's other things that go up every year. Not money. Bread. Did you hear about bread? A loaf of bread 20 years ago, seven cents. Did you hear about it? Today, the same loaf of bread is maybe 30. So if you save bread instead of money... <laughs> You could be worth a fortune. I never do this for years. I was eating up my profit. <laughs> now I go into a restaurant. I see bread. I don't need it. I put it in my pocket. I don't cash checks. I bread them. <laughs> Let me explain this to you. You're lucky I'm not busy. I'm on the wrong side again. I hope too many people don't take me too seriously because, you know, a lot of people are liable to think that I believe in these things. Only reason I make these speeches is because I'm giving up this country. I'm going to Russia. I'm not ashamed to tell you, to me, Russia is the best place. Do you know it's the only place in the world where they're not worried about communism? <laughs> and I'll be honest with you, I'm not worried about communism either, because I know in case of a real war, I don't know if you heard about it, we got SAG bombers that would be up in the air in 15 minutes. That's right. Now the rest of us would be up in the air in two. <laughs> That's the trick, to beat the bombers in the air. I don't want to talk too much on these subjects because, let's be honest about it, I thank God that I live in this country and I know who I am. I'm no great philosopher and I don't want people to think that I'm presumptuous enough to believe that I am. I thank God that I live in this country. Let's be honest about it. I know who I am. For years I didn't know. It's a lucky thing my psychiatrist told me who I am. <laughs> well, I walked into his office. He said to me right away, he said, this is not you. I said, it's not me? Then who is it? Is it you? He said, no, it's not me either. I said, then who needs you? He said, I'm here to help you look for the real you. I said, no kidding. If I don't know who I am, how'll I know who to look for? And even if I find me, how'll I know if it's me? Besides, if I want to look for me, what do I need him? I can look myself. Or I can take my friends. We know where I was. <laughs> we'll know where to look. Besides, I said to myself, what if I find the real me and I find that he's even worse than me? What do I need him? I don't make enough for myself. I need a partner. Ten years ago, I'd be glad to look for anybody. Now I'm doing good. Why should I look for him? He needs help. Let him look for me. He said, the search for the real you will have to continue. That'll be $25, please. I said to myself, this is not the real me. Why should I give him the 25 dollars? I'll look for the real me. Let him give him the 25 dollars. To make emotions, I think I'm finished. And if I don't get off, I'll be not only finished here, but in the whole business. Because this happened once before, and if it happens again, woo-hoo. So let's go. Good night.